Greetings, and welcome to Ralph Reads, brought to you by T-U-R-N, the United Ronin Networks. My name is Ralph Anthony Garcia, also known as R4, the legal, the loyal, the regal, the royal Ronin Ralph, your master of ceremonies. I would like to thank you for joining me and to please tell a friend to tell a friend to like, share, comment, and subscribe to T-U-R-N, the United Ronin Networks. We are Ronin. On today's episode of Ralph Reads, I will introduce you to a screenplay written by Walter Hill, based on the Soul Yorick novel and the 1979 Paramount Pictures cinema classic, The Warriors, to commemorate its unbelievable 40th anniversary. All aboard the Express, and let the reading commence. Let's meet the Warriors. Cleon, the leader, president of the Warriors, tough, wiry, great street intelligence, charismatic. He has a tightly controlled intensity. The Fox, quick-witted, emotional, verbose. He is the memory man, known for his enormous knowledge of other gangs within the city. His toughness is as much of an attitude as physical aptitude. Fast of foot, a perfect scout on military missions, and Rembrandt's best friend. Swan, the war chief, laconic by nature, very tough, very resourceful, a natural military tactician. He combines shrewdness and physical courage by choice, a loner. He dislikes the necessity of taking command. Rembrandt, the marker or artist, the shyest member of the warriors, small, kinetic, somewhat reserved. He can climb anywhere, move silently, the youngest of the patrol. Cochise, a rough and ready street boy who has a simple approach to his existence. Fight and fornicate, a soldier, and a good one. Cowboy, wears a Stetson hat, lithe, quick, amiable, goes along with the crowd, always smiles. Vermin, raw-boned and tough, not always a disciplined soldier. He complains a lot before he bops, but he's always there. Snowball, tall, lean, the face and body of a Maasai warrior, disciplined, yet an attitude that suggests independence. He never speaks. Ajax, his attitude is cantankerous at best, rebellious with more than overtones of cruelty at the worst. Proud of his physical strength, he most dislikes the fox among the other warriors, although Swan runs a close second, a natural inclination for mixing violence and sex. In the 4th century before Christ, a mercenary army of Greek soldiers found themselves stranded in the middle of the Persian Empire, miles from the sea, miles from safety enemy troops around them on every quarter. This is a story of that army's forced march. This is a story of courage. This is a story of war. Gangs of New York on the move. Tenement Street, Lower East Side. A black and Hispanic gang. The regal, royal, Ronin rebels come trucking down the sidewalk. Among the scattered pedestrians, a young blonde model type. She spots the gang approaching, clutches her purse more tightly. The gang moves closer and closer. The terrified model looks left and right. The gang neatly sidesteps, politely detouring around her. All of them flash big grins as they go past. 
Cut to the harbor, the Staten Island ferry docks. An Irish gang, the Gerards, leans out over the rail. Look at Manhattan beyond. Move toward the gangplank. Cut to City Street, the Bronx, strewn with rubble. Lined with the shells of burnt-out buildings. A basement door in one of the gutted buildings opens. Nine members of a Puerto Rican gang file out. A psychedelic old fish-tailed Cadillac at the curb. The gang pals in their lurid killer tank. The car roars away. Cut to 2nd Avenue, Manhattan. The base of the 59th Street Bridge. A gang, the Hi-Hats, ride the Skyway from Roosevelt Island down. Move into the nearby subway station. Cut to a city street in Queens, beneath an L. An Italian gang, the Knockdowns, they begin to go up the steps leading to a platform. Cut to the L stairway in Astoria, Queens. Nine members of the Boyle Avenue Runners ascend the stairs, head for the turnstiles. Cut to a subway station in Canarsie. Nine members of the gladiators go clicking through the turnstiles one by one. Cut to the platform on Bedford-Stuyvesant. Nine members of the Howitzers watch a graffiti-covered subway train approach. The car stop, door snapping open. Cut to the platform, Harlem. Nine members of the Electric Eliminators complete boarding a subway car. Doors closing with a hiss. The train roars off. Cut to black, then fade into a building in the daytime. Rising above the boardwalk at Coney, covered with graffiti. The sound of waves beyond. Base of the wall, Rembrandt working with a spray can. A few deft touches. Across the beach, Ajax working out on the rings. Vermin, Cowboy, and Snowball are nearby. The fox walks up. Ooh, big man. Look at all those muscles. So powerful. God, please spare us. Ajax stops his workout. Hey, fox. Yeah? Why don't you get the fuck out my face? Hey, fuck face. That's a good one. That's real original. Great. Just great. Wish I'd had come up with that one. Pause. Hey, Ajax. Yeah. A few laughs from Cowboy and Vermin. I'm telling you, F. Watch your mouth. Listen up, big boy. Save yourself for all the girlies. He turns and walks off. Little F. Ajax spewed as he resumes his workout. Swan sits a few yards from Rembrandt. The wind carries some confetti by. He throws a bowie knife, catches a moving piece of paper. Again lifts the knife, again catches a moving scrap of refuse. On the boardwalk, Cleon and his girl Lincoln, both seated on a bench looking towards the sea. She lights a cigarette. I don't like it. You don't like what? Going up to this meeting. You ain't going. Don't worry about it. I'm worried about you going. I've got a feeling. Oh, oh. Things have been going real good lately. I don't want anything to screw us up. I like everything just the way it is. I told you, don't worry about it. You like it since we've been back together? Yeah, sure. I treat you good, right? Yeah. Look, do we have to talk about all of this? I got a lot to think about. You're not gonna pay any more attention to that Second Avenue girl? I told you. That's done. How many times I got to tell you? Tell me. I'm better looking than she is. Of course you're better looking than she is. She's a ho. Oh. Yeah. Right. Lincoln exhales. This conclave's gonna be a real big deal. Trust me on this. At the wall... The fox hunkers down next to Swan. A moment of silence. You okay? No response. Cochise sits down next to the fox. You got a problem. Still looking at Swan. 
the war chief just holding his knife. I got a problem, Coach, he said. What the f are we doing with this powwow anyway? What's it all about? Nobody knows, the fox answered. Cyrus ain't said. I mean, who the f is he? Cochise asked. President of the biggest gang in the city, Fox responded. You got that? He's asked for a conclave. One day's truce. No guns, no blades, no weapons for nobody. Hey, Cochise yelped. Weapons give us power. Power is what makes us warriors. We're going in there like we're a bunch of douches. We're going in there like everybody else. Nine guys, no power, truce, Fox said. Fox then looks back at Swan. You're steamed because you cannot bring your blade. You've never been any place where you haven't been packed. Right, Swan uttered. What else? Paul. Oh, come on. Ajax, Swan said. He ain't much of a soldier if things go bad. Hey, it's just a powwow, Fox replied. We ain't going up there to soldier. Cleon ain't going to lead us up the creek. I'll tell you something, Fox, Cochise added. Anytime any family's got no power, they're fucked up. Swan looks over at the Fox for the first time. He's right. Cut to the beach. Ajax still working out. Vermin is close by. One thing we might get out of this get-together is meeting some strange wool. I wouldn't mind laying a little something down on the way back, Ajax said. You got a one-track brain, you know that? Vermin replied. What's the matter? You're going big ass. Hey man, I'm ready. Something falls our way. I'll be there. Cut to the surf. Cowboy and Cochise hunker down, staring out at the sea. Where the fuck is this place? I ain't never been to the Bronx, Cowboy said. Long way from here, Daddy, Cochise replied. Okay then, what the fuck is this conclave all about? Hey man, that's what I've been asking. You believe in this truce? What do you think? Cut to the beach. Ajax pumps twice on the bars, does a flying dismount, and smiles. Cut to the wall, Swan's just holding his knife, looking at the blade. The sun is visible over the amusement park horizon line. The boardwalk. Later that afternoon, Cleon with the warriors standing in front of them. Lincoln off to one side. A lot of you ain't real happy about going on this patrol, but remember this. We got a street family of 120 plus affiliates. You are the chosen for this expedition, which that makes you special. Now here's the lineup. Snowball, you the music man. Snowball hefts a huge radio. Wine bottle canteen tied by a thong over one shoulder. Cowboy. Soldier in the middle. Vermin, you're the bearer. You got the tokens and the bread. Swan, second in command. War chief, stick by me. Rembrandt, you got your stuff? Rembrandt snaps open his medical case, loaded with spray cans. Good. You mark the city. Hit everything in sight. I want people to know the warriors were there. Aw, oh, f*** that, Ajax said. He'll just slow us down. Shove it, Ajax, Fox uttered. Pause. Ajax, you just soldier. And try to keep your mouth shut, Cleon said as he gives him a look. Then Ajax backs off. Fox, Scout, and Memory Man, you run and tell us what we need to know. Cochise, you and Ajax in the middle, heavy muscle. You got mad mother all right. Just remember, we got a truce on, Cleon said, so don't go flexing any muscle, unless you get an order from me, okay? Let's roll. They start off. Cleon stops by Lincoln. We're going. Does that mean I'm supposed to like it? Why not? I told you before. Hey, no sweat. Like I told you before, this is a big deal. 
Lincoln touches her hair and moves off. Cut to the city. Dusk. Sun beginning to dip in the west. Waterfront. Dusk. The outline against the setting sun on the first phase of their long trek. City Street. Dusk. The warriors are following along. Cut to the alleyway. Dusk. Tenements high around them. Rembrandt points to a huge gang insignia marker on a brick wall. This is right in the middle of Mongol territory, Vermin said. Hey, Cowboy added, this truce better be a real one. Yeah, Cochise said. We lost a cat to them last year. You sure there's a truce going on, Vermin asked. Keep walking, Cleon ordered. Swan moves up to a first position, approaches the alley corner. Swan then turns the corner, hesitates. The fox at his side. Holy Christ! The street, lined with Mongols in the street playing stoop ball on the porches, looking down from the fire escapes. Holy sh! Cowboy uttered. We got to walk through this, Cochise said. We're going to get creamed. Jesus, we are going to get creamed, Vermin said fearfully. Cyrus said truce, Cleon uttered. He moves ahead. The patrol reluctantly follows. Cut to the middle of the street. All eyes of the Mongols trained on the warriors as they pass. A stoop ball player whizzes a ball in front of Cochise. He catches it. Keeps playing. Just keep moving. Nobody let off, Cleon demanded. I wasn't planning on it, Cowboy replied. How come these Mongols ain't going to the Conclave? Cochise asked. They are. Everybody's just sending nine. Remember, Turkey? All the Mongols continue to stare at them, but nobody makes a move. Man, this is a long-ass street, Cowboy said. I think we're going to make it, Vermin said. Maybe they're just half, Ajax spewed. A Mongol turns and looks at Ajax. Ajax stares back. Yeah, sure, anytime. You, right there, the Mongol said, pointing at Ajax. Cleon grabs Ajax's arm. Hey, Ajax, shut the fuck up. Swan gives Ajax a look. Just walk, Swan said. Yeah, okay. Big deal, Ajax mocks. They move on. The Mongol still yapping. Yup, any time, mother up. You heard me. Any time, mother up. Another Mongol utters. Yeah, come back and see us, warriors. You really got your head up your ass, Ajax, you know that? The fox uttered. Your brains are ish. You got ish for brains. Y yeah, what a dumb up, cowboy agreed. Yeah, big deal. All of y'all is big ass anyway. The corner now in sight. This Cyrus must be something, Kochi said. I'll tell you one thing. That gang of his, the Gramercy Riffs, that's something. Fox said. They pass by. They turn the corner. Cut to roadway. The warriors move into view. Outlines against the evening sky. Cut to the path. Cleon motioning the other warriors to move along. They follow one by one, tramping onward. You sure this is the way? Cowboy asked. Yes, I'm sure. God damn it. This is the way they told me to come. They continued forward, a lot of grumbling in the ranks. How come we don't see anybody else? Somebody please explain that shit to me, Vermin asked. Yeah, where the f*** are we, Cochise asked. It's so dark you can't see your own ish, Ajax uttered. Let me reassure you about that, big boy. It's there, the fox answered. You ought to know, big ass, Ajax spewed. The fox slips into falsetto. You wanna know, Igas, you wanna know, Igas, 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 Igas. 
Quiet, Cleon commanded. I don't like this, Vermin said. Come on, quiet, Rembrandt uttered. Yup, of that, I don't like it, Ajax said. Nobody cares what you like, ape man, the fox answered him. Quiet back there, Cleon commanded. I don't like it, Vermin said again. Ish, Cowboy began. We're the only ones around. Maybe we've been set up. Cleon, still in front, peers around a stairway landing leading to an open plaza. Big smile. Yeah, sure. We're the only ones here. The others arrive at the landing, looking out. Nine faces very respectful of what they see. Holy Christ, the fox uttered. Look at that, Vermin said out loud. Jesus, Cold Cheeks agreed. Ajax merely says, Huff. A conclave of the principal gangs within the city, in all their splendor, ornate finery, and Baruch appearance, featuring the Alley Cats, the Amsterdam All-Stars, the Black Hands, the Black Jacks, the Big Trains, the Boyle Avenue Runners, the Charlemagnes, the Colt 45s, the Coney Island Warriors, the Dealers, the Delaney Rovers, the Dingoes, the E Street Shufflers, the Easy Aces, the Electric Eliminators, the 8th Avenue Apaches, the Fastballs, the 5th Street Bombers, the Fillmores, the Firestarters, the Five Points, the Gerards, the Gladiators, the Gohards, the Gun Hill Dancers, the Gramercy Riffs, the High Rollers, the Homeboys, the Hoplites, the Howitzers, the Hucks, the Hurricanes, the Imps, the Jesters, the Jones Street Boys, the Judas Bunch, the Jupiters, the Knockdowns, the Knuckles, the Locos, the Magicians, the Meat Packers, the Moon Runners, the Napoleons, the Nickel Stakes, the Knight Riders, the Ninth Avenue Razors, the Panzers, the Phillies, the Plainsmen, the Queensbridge Mutilators, the Red Hook Shooters, the Roadmasters, the Regal, Royal, Ronin, Rebels, the Runaways, the Roadmasters, the Romans, the Saracens, the Saratogas, the Savage Huns, the Shanghai Sultans, the Southern Cross, the Speedwagons, the Stevedores, the St Stilettos, the Stonebreakers, the Terriers, the Turks, the Turnbull ACs, the Van Cortland Rangers, the Whispers, the Xenophones, the Xylophones, the Yo-Yos, the Youngbloods, the Zodiacs, the Zulus. Black, white, coffee-colored, Puerto Rican, Italian, Irish, Dominican, Mexican, standing, squatting, more like an encampment of armies than a meeting. The whole underside of the city. One outlandish set of uniforms after the other. Nobody here for fun. Hundreds of rough, menacing young men waiting, watching each other warily in the dark. Nervous, murmuring, restlessness, rising like a tide among them. Cut to the rogues, seated up against the wall of the first terrace, their leader, Luther, at one end. Cropsy, his second in command at his side. How's our present for Cyrus? It works. You sure? Real sure. Cyrus is just going to love it. Cut to the warriors, now seated within the plaza, straining to look in all directions. Ajax looks around. You think any night Riders are out here? I hate the mother Cyrus says, Rembrandt began. Cyrus says, Cyrus says. Huff, Cyrus, Ajax spits. Man, would you look at all this, Cold Cheese added. Which one, Cyrus? Cowboy asked. Hish, who knows, Vermin answered. He'll be here, Rembrandt uttered. How do you know? Ajax asked menacingly. I just know. Rembrandt answered softly. Swan and Cleon look around. Cleon smiles at Swan. I told you this would be big. You were right. Loosen up. Enjoy it. 
It's going to be something. Cut to the plaza. The huge audience shifts nervously, restive. Suddenly, Can you count, suckers? I say the future is ours! I'm f off much with the past, but I f off plenty with the future, and the future is ours! If you can count! The voice seems to be everywhere about them. Cyrus steps into the light, commanding presence born to royalty. First, we start with a miracle. Now look what we have here before us. We got the Saracens sitting next to the Jones Street Boys. We've got the Moon Runners right by the Van Corlin Rangers. Nobody is wasting nobody. That is a miracle. And miracles is the way things ought to be. The question before us is, can you make it with a little simple arithmetic? Because you've been shocked, brothers. That's right. The courts and the schools. That's one shock. But the people who call themselves your friends. That's the biggest shock of them all. The dudes from the youth board. Your guidance counselors. Your mentors. The community setters. That mobilization for youth. You smoke that. You are finished. The crowd gives him rapt attention. You'll go junky, then you'll get busted, and that's the future they got for you. You'll be ish out of luck, suckers! Pause. The crowd murmurs. Unless you can count. Cut to the gangs. The hypnotic power of Cyrus's voice grabs them. You're standing right now with nine delegates from a hundred gangs. And there's over a hundred more. That's 20,000 hardcore members. 40,000 counting affiliates. And 20,000 more are not organized, but ready to fight. 60,000 soldiers. That's like four army divisions. A surge growing in the faces of the crowd. Plus, you add in women. That comes to about a hundred thousand. One hundred thousand. Now there ain't but twenty thousand police in the whole town. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? The crowd screams their approval. Cut to the road near the plaza. A line of shadowy cars cutting off their lights turning. Cut back to the plaza. Cyrus continues to walk among the gangs. So here's the sum total. One gang can run the city. One gang! We can run the whole place! Nothing will move without us allowing it to happen! We can tax the crime syndicates! The police! Because we got the street suckers! Can you dig it? If they don't pay, they don't play! They can go ahead and take the damn subway! They can't go to the corner store or a movie! They can't go no place in public! They can't even step into an elevator without us coming down on them! Cut to the street. More cars with lights out pulling off the road. The ghostly shapes glide to a stop side by side. The muffled sound of doors opening. Shadowy figures getting out. The crowd cheers while Cyrus, standing glorious in the moonlight, still moving, arms upraised, and he lowers them to silence the crowd. Nobody in this city 
could be safe outside his door unless we say so. Because we are the power! The crowd roars their approval once again, even more deafening than before. The fox, trying to get a better view of Cyrus, he leaves the warriors, moves to the edge of the stone steps, finds himself near the rogues. A leg within the crowd, pants being pulled up. A magnum 357 taped to a calf. The tape is torn away. One hand passes the pistol to another, another hand, then another hand, and then finally, one more hand. The problem in the past has been the man turning us against one another. We have been unable to see the truth because we've been fighting for ten square feet of ground. Our turf, our little piece of turf. That's crap, brothers. The turf is ours by right, because it is our turn. A final hand lifts the 357, spins the chamber. Luther, seated with the rogues, holds the 357. Cyrus, in the light, looking more demonic than ever, he moves continuously. Listen to me, brothers. They kept us on the bottom long enough. Centuries and centuries and centuries. All we have to do is stick together. We keep up with the general truce. We take over one bar at a time. Secure our territory. Secure our turf. Because it's all The crowd screams louder than they ever did. Then, a louder sound, a roar of a gunshot, goes off. Cyrus's head snaps back. The crowd, instinctively crouching, a jangle of panic. Voices in the air. Who's shooting? Hey man, somebody's packed up! The gangs start to break and run every which way. The crowd dissolving in panic. Luther, his hands on the gun. Amid the confusion, no one seems to have noticed. The fox stares at Luther. He has seen the whole thing. Their eyes lock. One of those frozen moments. Then Luther swings the gun toward the fox, aims. Suddenly, light floods his face. He blinks, momentarily blinded. The fox bolts off. Cut to the whole plaza, now flooded with light. Rows of cars now facing the plaza, all police cruisers. We want to see everybody freeze! Freeze now! Freeze! This is the police! You better freeze your ass! A surge of bodies run away from that bullhorn. The warriors start to run with the flow. Cleon blocks their way. Nah! No! Against the crowd! Go that way! Indicating they are to go against the grain toward the light. As they turn, Cleon waves them past. Get your ass down! Down! Cleon ordered. The warriors, crouching low, moving through the crowd. Most of the crowd running the other way. This is the police! Stand still and you won't get hurt! Freeze! This is the police! A ring of police, riot shields, and sticks move in from the dark. The warriors moving toward the police cars, but crouching low, ducking into the shadow below the lights. Move it! Move it! Don't stop! Cleon ordered. 
The fox, picking his way through the crowd, grabs Rembrandt, pulls him along. Ajax is at Cowboy's side. Cleon, suddenly, he stops running, sees a body a short distance beyond. Still bending, he drifts towards it, bends down. It's Cyrus. The blood spreads across his face and behind his head on the floor. Three members of his gang are squatting nearby, clearly in a state of shock, oblivious to the pandemonium around them. Cleon, staring at the body, awe-stricken, disbelieving. Luther, standing nearby, points at Cleon. There he is! There he is! That's him! Cleon turns. Cyrus's men also turn to look. He's the one! He shot Cyrus! We saw him! Yeah, that's him! You crazy, I ain't done nothing! Luther runs at him. The warriors did it! The warriors did it! The warriors did it! Cleon breaks free of Luther and starts to his feet. Flattens two rogues. Belts propsy down, but catches a kick flush in the face from one of Cyrus's men. He goes down like a fell tree. Immediately, all the Gramercy riffs jump him. He disappears under a swarm of clubbing fists, feet, and elbows. Across the way, the Fox and Rembrandt about to slip past the ring of police cars. Rembrandt hesitates, looking back at the free-for-all. Come on, man, Fox said. There's something happening to Cleon? Rembrandt asked, shakingly. I think he's up ahead, Fox answered. You sure? Shit, no! Just move on! Come on! They vanish in the dark. Cut to the plaza, hundreds of milling gang members, sullen, surly, being herded towards the cars, waiting police buses. Cut to the lineup, gang members leaning spread eagle on the cars, some of them going into the police bus. A message is being passed along the line. Pass the word. The Warriors did it. Some dudes from Brooklyn. Pass it on. The Warriors, they're from Coney Island. Rack they ass. Rack they ass, I say. The Warriors, they got Cyrus. The Warriors, I say. The Warriors. The police are separating gang members. They're pulling away several of them from a huge melee. Cleon's body is now visible, along with Cyrus's, both laid in the pool of their own blood. Cut to the cemetery, rows of gravestones, small mausoleums, stone angels. The warriors vault the fence, stumble in past the gravestones, one by one drop into the shadows out of sight. The police car with the flashing light goes by on the street. Everybody make it? Swan asked. Ajax, Vermin, Cowboy, Rembrandt, Snowball, Cochise, you, and me. Just Cleon's missing, the fox said. They all gather around Swan with nervous looks on their faces. Okay, the fox began. Anybody see what happened? Anybody see anything? Fuzz must have got him, Cochise said. Did you see him get busted? Swan asked. Oh, no, he was there, then I ain't see him no more. I was hauling ass. Hey, I want to ask a question. What the f*** happened? Vermin asked. I didn't see anything, Ajax answered. Somebody put out Cyrus's headlight. That's what happened, Kochi said matter-of-factly. Ish! I didn't see that. I didn't see nothing, Cowboy exclaimed. You saw him go down, Vermin said. F***ing A, Kochi agreed. I didn't see nothing, Ajax said. I saw who creamed him, the fox said. They all stop and look at the fox. You saw who shot Cyrus? Vermin asked. Yeah, the fox said. Long pause. Well, who the f*** was it? Cochise asked. Some guy from the rogues, the fox answered. 
South Bronx gang, real punks. You sure it was the rogue? Swan asked. Yeah, the fox said matter-of-factly. I saw the guy that did it, and he saw me. They all think about that. Nah, I hate to be a rogue tonight. Those riffs are going to be on their ass, Cowboy said. Okay, what do we do now? Cochise asked. All eyes go to Swan. We go home. You mind telling us how? Vermin asked. Fucking Coney Island must be 50 miles from here. Took us hours. Give us the answer, Fox, Swan said coolly. We take a train, Fox answered. The same way we got here, and it's 27 miles. All we got to do is find a subway stop, grab a car to Union Square, and change for the Coney train. Yeah, real simple. Except every cop in the city is looking to bust our heads, Cochise said. F*** me, Ajax agreed. We got something else to think about, Swan said. Yeah? What? Vermin asked. The fox picks right up on it. The truce, is it still on? If it ain't, we're going to have to bop our way back, Vermin said. Not a happy prospect. Ish! I wish we were packed, Cowboy said. Snowball holds up his wine bottle canteen, shakes it, makes a thumbs up sign. Better than nothing, Cowboy said. A lot better, Swan agreed. What about the radio? Snowball makes a thumbs down sign. Hish! Ajax exploded. We got way bigger problems, yo, the fox uttered. Maybe we better not try and make it home, Rembrandt said. Yeah, right. We'll live the rest of our lives here in the graveyard, you dumb f Ajax said explicitly. Leave him alone, Ajax, the fox said. Yes. Swan looks at Rembrandt. We're going back. It's the only choice we got. Pause. Whatever happens, stick together. If the truce is off, anything could hit us between here and that train. We get separated, get to the platform at Union Square. That's where we change trains. Union Square, right, Cochise agreed. Everybody got that, Swan asked. Nods of agreement from everybody, except one. I only got one question, Ajax said. Who named you leader? Suddenly, no one is moving. I got as much right to take over as you. It was Cleon's choice. Swan is war chief, the fox said. Right about now, Cleon's most likely got a nightstick shoved halfway up his ass. Nick knives are the only reason you're up on anybody else. You're no leader without your blade, and you ain't got one. Ish. I bet you can't even find the subway. Every eye is on Swan. Maybe we ought to talk about it later. What's wrong with right now? I want to be warlord. Pause. Make your move. Swan challenged. A moment while the tension gathers. Swan and Ajax both ready for the first lunge. Rembrandt has climbed onto a ledge high on a tomb and looks off down the street. Hey, wait a minute! The train is right over there! A trestle some distance down the road, a subway train clacks across it. Cut to the cemetery, Swan and Ajax still facing one another. A long moment, then... Hey, Ajax, lighten up, Cowboy said. Yeah, big boy, Swan's war chief, Vermin agreed. Ajax looks over at Cochise, a potential ally who shakes his head. We better stick together, Coach said. Snowball just gives Ajax a simple, direct look. Then shakes his head. I think you just got outvoted, dum-dum, the fox said. F Ajax replied. He turns away in disgust. Okay, that's settled, Swan said. Now, let's move. He leads them away. Cut to the cemetery fence. Swan checks both ways, then vaults over. 
A hefty drop. He lands hard on the sidewalk. Swan waits, then motions to the others. One by one, they follow until they are all over the fence. All save one. Where the hell is Rembrandt? Vermin asked. Cut to the cemetery, where Rembrandt spray paints a gravestone, then scurries away towards the fence. Cut to the gravestone, with the letters of another gang on the back. Over the letters have been sprayed the warrior sign. The sound of thunder. Rain begins to make the paint run down the gravestone. We have reached the ending of this part of the miniseries on Ralph Reed's I Will Like or Rather Love You Queens and Kings Fellow Royalty for stopping by. You may reach me via Facebook, Ralph Anthony Garcia, Instagram, Twitter, as well as Periscope at RGMC2407. Email me, RGMC2407 at gmail.com, where if you would like to leave a donation, use the Zelle app or paypal.me forward slash RGMC2407. Or you may use Cash App. My cash tag is RGMC2407. You may also connect with me via my other channel RGMC Ralph Garcia Master of Ceremonies as well as this channel TURN the United Ronin Networks we are Ronin fellow royalty pick up a good book read a good story and set your good self free I appreciate you and I love you like cooked food I will see you folks on the continuation of this Warriors miniseries on Ralph Reed's Be Looking Good, y'all.